It's uh, a story that's been rumbling since February the 14th when the independent adjudicatory chamber of UEFA's club financial control body, uh, try saying that on a Monday morning, uh, said that City had broken the rules by overstating its sponsorship revenue in its accounts and in the break-even information submitted to UEFA between 2012 and 2016. So from February the 14th until now, that ban has been hanging over their heads. Uh, this morning, though, uh, that has been removed. Uh, so uh, let's go to Sue Smith and Stephen Warnock. Stephen, let's come to you first. Uh, how vindicated do Manchester City feel this morning? Well, I'm sure they're delighted. Um, I think there's always been a, a confidence that this would be overturned and it had, um, there wouldn't be a ban imposed. So Manchester City obviously felt that the case that they put forward was was strong enough and, and it's been uh, upheld today. So um, they'll be very, very happy, I'm sure, for the, for the, uh, the fans to know that the, the players will be staying. There won't be a wholesale sales of, uh, of, of their top players and um, it, I'm sure they'll be more than excited about the news coming out today. Where does this leave Manchester City, Sue? I mean, obviously, I, I guess in their preparations for next season, they had two scenarios in mind. This is the best case scenario they could have hoped for. But um, what, is this, what impact does this have on their summer plans, do you think? I think it's a, a huge victory, Rob. And, you know, I, I think yesterday, if, if Manchester City had, had, been set, had been told that they would still be part of the Champions League, but they'd have this this huge fine. They would have taken that all day because now it, it just means that hopefully Pep will stay. Hopefully the players will stay, that they want to stay. And they can bring in, they can recruit who they want to recruit. So it's, it's a huge victory for, for Manchester City. And, and like you say, they can now plan going forward what players are going to be there, what players that they can bring in. And, and of course, the Champions League is, is huge to, to Manchester City. They, they desperately want to win that. Yeah, and it also has, of course, huge implications, Stephen, for clubs below Manchester City in the Premier League. Notably, you would think Manchester United, Chelsea, Leicester. Um, let's talk about them because it could have gone down to fifth place uh, for a Champions League position if Manchester City had been banned. Now we're back to the usual top four. Uh, what will Leicester, United... Chelsea, think of that decision this morning. I'm sure they'll have had it in the back of their minds that that was the possibility anyway, and there was every chance that this would get overturned. Like I said earlier, the Manchester City were talking about um, how strongly they thought their case was. So I'm sure that the other clubs would have thought, look, listened to what was being said and said, well, we can't pin our hopes on that. We just need to be the teams that finish within the top four. So uh, the race is still on and it's exciting as ever. Yeah, I mean, the maths involved here could get a little bit tricky. So, Sue, get your abacus ready and, and your fingers, <laughs> because what it all... Where it all changes is if, of course, um, say Wolves would go and win the Europa League, uh, if Chelsea finished outside of the top four and managed to beat Bayern Munich and go on and win the Champions League, then the fourth place team would drop out because we can uh, only have a maximum of, of five in there. So it's, it's still very much up for grabs. And quite where uh, the Europa League positions will finish all depends on who wins uh, the FA Cup, if Arsenal finish outside of the top six or seven even uh, and win the FA Cup, what implications that all has. So still very much up in the air. Stephen, and that affects all those clubs' plannings uh, for the summer. They can't quite uh, dot the I's and cross the T's on that one yet, can they? No, I think what you're just trying to do is, is make sure that you're in positions. I mean, you've got to finish the league as strongly as you can, and what what will be will be. Um, there's there's no not really that much point in trying to predict who's going to win things because it, it just won't work out that way um, because. It's very, very difficult to call who's going to win what and, and where they're going to finish in the league. I think we all thought that Leicester were a, a shoe in to finish in the top four. When you think back to 10, 11 games ago, they were sort of 13 points clear of the team 
um, closest to them and, and look at the gap that's being closed now. So there's plenty to plenty to go on in the next few games. And uh, I'm sure the, the teams will just be thinking, if we can try and win every game that we can, then uh, then we should be fine. Yeah, they wouldn't be the first team to have been banned uh, from European competition. AC Milan serving a ban. Um, but, so where does this leave you away for now? They say they remain committed to financial fair play. But has this put a huge dent in their ambitions to drive this forward? I think it has from a, a UEFA perspective. You know, obviously from a, a Manchester City perspective, it's exactly what they would have wanted. I'm sure they wouldn't have wanted the, the huge fine, but that is the ideal scenario that they can play in the Champions League. But of course, from from FFP, you, you must. A lot of critics will be saying, "Well, well, this shouldn't have happened." But but Manchester City were they were confident. Pep was confident in all of his interviews that I listened to. He was talking about the Champions League and how he believed in in the hierarchy at Manchester City and that they were going to get cleared of this and and he was going to be staying and, and seeing out his contract. And so I think Manchester City as a, as a whole were were confident that this was was going to happen. Um, and it, like I say, it's it's fantastic for them. But for UEFA, I'm not so sure. Is financial fair play, though, tenable, uh, Stephen? And actually, is it morally right here? It can. Should teams be allowed to put as much money in to their clubs as they want to? I think there's. There's an argument that that's what uh, what football fans want, isn't it? But then, obviously, the richest owners go out and try and buy whoever they want. I think you want to try and keep football on a level playing field as much as as much as you can um, for the survival of of clubs down the bottom end to give teams opportunity to compete at the highest level. Um, I think we we always see that throughout the years. It's it, it's more often than not the richest teams who are going out buying. Uh, the best players spending big wages on players as well. But I think there's been a little bit of a trend change this season. With And when I say they've spent big money, Liverpool, but the net spend isn't huge. They've they sort of, they've sold players for, for big money and then they've reinvested that money. Um, so there is a way of, of doing it, but more often than not, it is the rich clubs who, who benefit from it. I, I do think the, the idea behind FFP was, was a, a good idea. But obviously, if, if, if this is happening where um, there's ways around it, I mean, it, they're actually coming out and saying that they have broke the rules. And if you've broke the rules, you should be punished. But they obviously felt that the, the, uh, the, the fine, if you like, of, of a ban was too long, but they still are paying a fine. So when you've got rich owners and you've got the ability to put your hand in your pocket again and pay that fine, then it doesn't really uh, stand up. Yeah, but the Court of Arbitration of Sport, the, the accusation uh, that was thrown at Manchester City, Sue, was that Sheikh Mansour uh, and others within the club, what they were doing was they were paying uh, money to the club uh, that was over and above what sponsorship deals should have been uh, at an equitable rate. What the Court of Arbitration of Sport this morning has decided, and, and I'll use their words um, because uh, this is what they said, they did not disguise equity funding as sponsorship contributions. So what they're saying is actually they didn't. What they were fined for uh, was their failure to cooperate uh, properly with UEFA authorities. And uh, the accusation would lead to implications, wouldn't it, if, if it was founded. All city success over the past few years, people would have gone, yeah, but. This today actually clears them from that. There, there can be no accusations of that because the Court of Arbitration of Sport have said that wasn't the case. So uh, as far as City is concerned, what does that do to their reputation? It leaves them free, doesn't it? Well, it does. And, and I think that was that was one of the concerns, wasn't it? That, you know, there's a lot of concerns, I think, over this. And, you know, it was it was Pep, it was the players, it was the, the recruitment, it was the financial implications. But it was also the damage of, of the reputation. And, and that was something that that they wouldn't have wanted. You know, you don't want to be seen as a, a team that's that's cheated their way to trophies, if you like. And and that's something that I think they'll be pleased that that, that is, is the case. But, you know, like Stephen says, the fact that 
they have been found guilty of something, but it's it's how they're you know what have what are the the consequences of that and the consequences were that they they've been fined but they haven't had this this ban so it's difficult for us i suppose we don't know the ins and the outs i know we can we can read through the, the whole document but i suppose that the positive is that that man or the positive for manchester city is that that they still will be playing champions league football yeah that's the bottom line where does this leave the premier league and, and english football team because in the Premier League and in English football, in the in the EFL as well, there is a variations of financial fair play. Uh, Manchester City uh, have been investigated uh, by the Premier League since March 2019. Those investigations started, uh, and the Premier League this morning have said that investigation is still ongoing. But it'd be very hard to to do anything here uh, when the Court of Arbitration of Sport have said that City have no case to answer as far as uh, equity funding a sponsor sponsorship contributions and the disguise of that is concerned? I think we just have to carry on as normal now. Um, I think there's been a lot of talk about Manchester City. I think that's all been put to bed today. I think when you, like you say, Robert, the Premier League is still investigating, but they, they've ultimately got the decision from the hierarchy now that they're, they're OK and what, and what they've done. OK, the rules might be a little bit different for the Premier League, but um, if they were to take it to the hierarchy again, it, it seems that they would be cleared. So I think we just have to take take it that Manchester City have done no wrong. Um, they've they've been found not guilty of of what they were sort of questioned about, and and they've cleared everything. They've answered everything they can. So you just have to continue as normal and uh, accept that that's the final decision.